My name is Winston Chow. I'm an Associate Professor of Humanities here at the Singapore Management University. I work with the School of Social Sciences and also with the Office of Core Curriculum. Uh, I do lots of research on urban-related climate change. I look at how cities affect weather and climate and how weather and climate affects cities. Despite being half the world away, literally, Singapore and the Arctic, is, there's an indirect link um, that is brought about by climate change. We know that uh, during the summer in the Arctic, the sea ice melts and it's been melting at a rapid rate. So the, both the aerial extent of sea ice and the volume of sea ice in the Arctic has gone down precipitously over the past 30 years. Why is that of concern in Singapore? Because once that melt, the, 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 the sea ice melts significantly enough, you can then Countries that usually use the route that passes through Singapore, through the Straits of Malacca, taking advantage of Singapore's geographical position as a, as a trade node uh, for various goods and services. Um, certain countries in Europe, certain countries in East Asia uh, or in North America might find it more efficient, might find it cheaper to ship all these goods through the Northwest Passage where it is unencumbered by the obstacles of icebergs or by other forms of sea ice. So if that happens, and it most likely will at some point in the future where sea ice is thin enough or is small enough in extent uh, to make that trade route profitable, there will be that impact on Singapore's economy, on Singapore's prosperity that we have to consider. And this is no thanks to climate change. So the question is what does the science say in terms of the impacts to Southeast Asia and to Singapore in particular? Um, there can be direct impacts. Three come readily to mind. One would be the increased temperatures, the increased average temperatures that the entire region is facing. We see that uh, also manifest in heat waves that are more frequent and can be more intense in the region. There's also an issue of changing levels of uh, rainfall or precipitation. It can also be snow. So changing levels of rainfall, it can either be too much rainfall, which leads to extremes in floods that have been happening a lot in Southeast Asia. Climate change impacts are already visible today. It is not something that we'll see in the future. In Asia especially, it, it is manifest directly through increased temperatures outdoors, especially in summer, can exceed 45 degrees Celsius, like in Ahmedabad in India, which makes it almost fatal to work outdoors. The scientific community have been communicating this urgency, this issue of uh, the, the, the sort of dangers of climate change, the, the hazards involved in climate change since the first assessment report came out in the early 1990s. We've been very consistent in saying that it's human cause. There's much more evidence showing the dangers that arise from it. There's, and there's also much more literature showing how we can mitigate and adapt to it. Rapid unprecedented changes and transitions in all aspects of society are required in order to keep to that 1.5 degree C threshold. We, we can't force people as a scientific community. We have to remain objective. Uh, but in communicating that, the message has to be heard. It has to be listened by people. It takes two hands to clap. We are trying to say that this is an urgent issue. We need we need policymakers, we need other stakeholders, businesses, the youths of today, the people who have a stake in what, what will happen in the years to come to join us. And it's frustrating. You, we can't resist the need for action on climate change. It is to our best interest, it's to your own interest to incorporate sustainability thinking, to incorporate that renewable energy is the way to the future, that Fossil fuels are on the way out. It's a sunset industry. Companies can divest from this sort of pollutive industries into renewable energies that are the future, that can give you a profit, that can actually uh, be aligned with the sustainable development goals uh, that the United Nations has you know, generated with the SDGs. I remain optimistic and we all should remain optimistic. It's easy to sink into despair that there's nothing that can be done. Uh, the impacts will overwhelm us. But look at the past. There are historical precedents that can be followed, that can, sh that can show the way towards aligning everybody's interests towards mitigating climate change. And it is my, I remain optimistic that such a path can be followed as well, rapidly, uh, in the years to come to deal with climate change.